ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah وخير هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم And the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها And the worst of affairs are those things we knew we invented to this religion of ours وكل محدثة بدعة and everything we newly invented to this religion of ours is an innovation. وكل بدعة ضلالة And every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. وكل ضلالة في النار Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. ثم أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, from time to time upon hearing the people complain, upon hearing the things that are troubling them, you see many people questioning Allah or wal'ayyad billah, even getting to the point where they may be angry with Allah and His decree. And we must remind ourselves that this world, this dunya, is decreed by the best of planners. Listen to what is given to us in the Quran and the Sunnah to reaffirm your belief and your patience and your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qal Allah. ما أصاب من مصيبة في الأرض ولا في أنفسكم إلا في إلا في كتاب من قبل أن نبرأها إن ذلك على الله يسير. الله عز وجل says what means no calamity, nothing befalls on the earth or in yourselves, but it's inscribed in a book of decrees. Before we bring it into existence, verily that is easy for Allah. Everything that happens was written 50,000 years before Allah created the heavens and the earth. When He commanded the pen to write. ثُمَّ قَالَ اللَّهُ قُلْ مَا يُسِيبُنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبُ اللَّهُ لَنَا Allah says what means that nothing will have to say, nothing happens, nothing occurs except with what Allah decreed for it to occur. ثُمَّ قَالَ اللَّهُ أَمْ حَسِبْتُمْ أن تدخل الجنة ولما ولما يأتيكم مثل الذين خلوا من قبلكم بسّتهم بأساء وضراء وزلزلوا حتى يقول الرسول والذين معه متى نصر الله إن ألا إن نصر الله قريب الله says what means or do you think that you will enter paradise without having any trials any tests any difficulties as those who came before you they were afflicted with, afflicted with severe poverty, with ailments, and they were so shaken that even the messenger that was with them and those who believed along with him said, when will the help of Allah come? Yes, certainly the help of Allah is near. For us to get a degree in anything that requires a degree, it takes many years of study and many tests. To even get a license to drive, it requires you to study and to take some tests. Do we think that Jannah will just be given to us without having earned it, without passing some tests along the way so that we can be given it as a gift and a reward? Look at us, how we look at things, we lose things, Akwan. Sometimes we'll lose someone we love, although it is great, we'll lose 
money, we'll lose property, we'll lose something of value to us in our eyes, and we'll act like we lost the whole world, like Allah took our soul out of our bodies. But then we deny the blessings Allah gave us when He said, وَإِن تَعُدُّ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَغَرُونَ كَفَّارَ When He said, if you were to count the blessings and the favors of Allah, you would never be able to enumerate them. Verily, man is an extreme wrongdoer, an extreme ingrate. Millions of blessings. You have a loved one you lost, you most likely have other loved ones. You lost some money, you most likely have something else, but if you don't, you still have something to your name. You have breathing, and even if it's difficult for you, there are others who have it worse. You have kidneys that function, there are those who don't have both that function. Maybe one does, or they may not have any, they have to be on dialysis. There's all these functions, these blessings, these favors that we take for granted and we don't see them as blessings. We just think that we're due to them by Allah. Allah, He said, سَيَجْعَلُ اللَّهُ بَعْدَ عُسْرٍ يُسْرًا Allah says what means that Allah will, break, will grant ease after every hardship. Allah will grant ease after every hardship. فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا And He said, عز وجل, Verily along with every hardship there is ease. Indeed, with every hardship there is ease. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we need to look at the situation as it is. لا تيأس ولا تحزن وقم مع الله سبحانه وتعالى Do not lose hope and do not be sad and do not despair, but be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if all of the troubles and the calamities were to fall on your back, you should train yourself in a way to be patient because None other than the one who created you is testing you and trying you with those hardships. For with Allah is things greater than we can imagine. With Allah as a reward is things greater than we can even think of. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that Allah he said, عَدَدْتُ لِعْبَادِ الصَّالِحِينَ مَا لَا عِنُ الرَّأَتْ وَلَا أُذِنُ السَّمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ Allah Azza wa he said in the Hadith, Qudsi, he said, I have prepared for my righteous slaves what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what cannot even occur to the human heart. Allah has in store for those who are patient great things. A Jannah forever with no sadness, no sorrow, no uh, hardship, no old age, no illness. But we have to earn it to get there. So know that good can come out of every trial. Know that good can come out of every test and every hardship. As Allah, He said, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَقْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْنُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ تَعْلَمُونَ Allah says what means that perhaps you might see a thing that's bad for you or evil for you, but it's really good, going to be good for you. Good will come out of it. And perhaps you see a thing Maybe you like a thing, but really it will be bad for you, and Allah knows and you do not know. And how many times in your life have you seen this? <laughs> Take this ayah, print it on a piece of paper, put it all over your home. Put it on, in, on your phone so you see it every time you open it, whatever it takes. Because this is half of your way to getting towards accepting the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal. You may hate a thing. How many times did we hate something or get so stressed or nervous, and Allah brought a lot of good with it? But we didn't see it. Everything occurs by Allah's will. This is reality. And it occurs according to His hikmah, to His wisdom. Facing difficulties may be in your best interest. Have you ever thought of that? Facing a hardship might be better for you because if there was ease, maybe you would have gone astray. Maybe you would have sinned. Maybe you would have went towards kufr or shirk. So you must reflect upon these things. Facing difficulties might be in your best interest in the long run. So be pleased and content with Allah's decree. Do not be like the foolish ones who question Allah. Or they say, I'm angry with God or I'm angry with Allah. Billah. This is not anything that should be even thought and definitely not uttered on the tongue of the Muslim. Allah says, مَا أَصَابَ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ مَا أَصَابَ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِ قَلْبَهِ Allah Azza wa Jalla says what means 
No calamity. Nothing of what you look at as a calamity befalls on this earth except by the will of Allah. The one who created you, the one who created everything that you see around you is the one who gives you what you have or what you deal with. No calamity befalls except by the will of Allah and whoever believes in Allah, he will guide his heart. The one who believes in Allah, Allah will guide his heart and make him content. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ عَجِبَ لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنْ أَمْرَهُ كُلُّهُ خَيْرٌ وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِمُؤْمِنٍ إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ سَرَّاءٌ صَبَرَ شَكَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاءٌ صَبَرَ وَكَانَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم in this hadith which is in Sahih Muslim he said amazing is the fear of the believer in that it is always good for him and this is only true for a believer when good comes his way and he's blessed with something of ease, he praises Allah and he thanks Allah and he knows this came to him by Allah so he's patient with it. And when hardship comes his way, when difficulty comes his way, when he's tested and tried, he is patient and that is better for him. This is the affair of the believer and the one that Allah will resurrect as a mu'min, as a believer. To be patient in times of difficulty and hardship. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن إن عدم الجزاء مع عظم البلاء وإن الله إذا أحب قوما ابتلاهم فمن رضي فله الرضا ومن سخط فله السخط. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said the greatness of the reward is with the greatness of the trial. If you think Allah is testing you in a big way, then you're going to get rewarded in a big way if you're patient. Verily, if Allah loves the people, He tests them. This is only in Islam that we see this and we're blessed with this wisdom and this insight that when you're tested and tried, this is a sign of Allah's love for you. That if you just had ease, that this is not necessarily a sign that Allah loves you, but when you are patient, when you are tested, then this is a sign that Allah loves you. He can cleanse your sins in that way. He can bring you closer to Him. He can remind you to remember Him instead of you forgetting Him when times are easy. Like most of the people do. Verily, if Allah loves the people, He tries them. Whoever is pleased will have pleased, will have Allah's pleasure. Whoever is angered will have Allah's anger. And this hadith is Hasan in the Sunnah of Tirmidhi. So be pleased with Allah with whatever He has decreed for you. Make the supplication, the dua, as part of your daily ad'i, as part of your daily dua that the Prophet used to make. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-rida ba'd al-qaba. O Allah, grant me to be pleased with whatever you decree. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, rely upon Allah. It's most needed in times of difficulty and tragedy, in times of tribulation and calamities and trials. Whether you lose a loved one, or your job, or your health, or your wealth, turn to Allah. So when misfortune happens, no matter how great, no matter how hard the difficulty that comes to you, comes to you, you'll be ready and you'll know to not give it importance over the importance of the relationship with you and your Lord. لا تعطيها أكثر مما تستحق. Do not give any trial more importance than what it's worth. Do not let your life depend on it. من قال أن سعادة سعادة الدنيا موقوفة على مال أو كثرة الأولاد أو على منصب. Who said that happiness in life depends on money? We've been proving that it doesn't. Because the richest of the people seem to be the most depressed and sad. Who said that happiness in life is upon having a great large family, a great number of kids. We have seen that many times this has become a trial or a tribulation for the person. Who has said that happiness is based on the status or the position that, you hold, that people hold of you in their eyes. When we've seen that no matter what status or position you have, that those people once you're gone from this earth, they forget about you. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, in the sa'ada la taquna bi shay'in a'zamu min taqwallah. Happiness is nothing than be nothing. Happiness is nothing greater than obtaining taqwa. So we should search and we should try hard and struggle to get that taqwa. When you fear Allah and you keep your duty to Allah and you live your life in a way that puts between you and Allah's punishment a barrier, this taqwa, this is when you achieve happiness. This is when nothing can rock you off that boat of contentment and being patient and pleased with Allah's decree. So fix yourself in your deen before it's too late. 
أصلح ما بينك وبين الله عز وجل. Fix between what's between you and Allah. Fix your relationship with Allah. Praise your Lord and glorify Him upon Tawheed. That all worship is for Him alone without any partners in truth. In all trials, remember Allah has a replacement for everything that slips away. When you're broken, Allah will heal you. When you need improvement in outcomes, Allah will give it. When you get to the point where you'll be rewarded, Allah will enhance your rewards. He is our Lord, the manager of all affairs and of everything. The one who between his two fingers lie the hearts of Bani Adam, lie the hearts of the people. And Allah will turn them the way He wants. خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ He is the best of all planners. قَالَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَوْلَاكُمْ نِعْمَ الْمَوْلَى وَنِعْمَ النَّصِيرِ He is the excellent one. Excellent is He for you as a protector and a supporter, and excellent is He for you as a helper. So reflect upon this, that Allah he is your protector and your supporter, your provider, your comforter, your nourisher. هُوَ مَلِكِ الْمُلُوكُ وَأَرْحَمَ الرَّاحِمِينَ وَأَكْرَمَ الْأَكْرَمِينَ he is the King of Kings, the most merciful of those who have mercy. The kindest of, and most generous of those who show kindness and mercy. But Allah's kindness, Allah's mercy has no end. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, فَأَحْسَمُ الظَّنَّ فِي اللَّهِ تَعَالَى So have good suspicion, have good expectations of your Lord regarding everything. With every trial and test, with every bit of sadness and sorrow, trust in Allah Azza wa Do this and you'll be of those who stay positive like the believers should be. Allah Azza wa Jal, He said in the hadith Qudsi, I am just as my slave positively thinks of me. So if you think of Allah positively, if you think of Allah as the true protector and supporter and helper, then He will be that for you. So if you have good thoughts and expectations and hopes of your Lord when difficulty and hardship and tragedy strike, strike you, then this is good for you. But if when you're struck with misfortune, whether it's loss of life or wealth or health or whatever it may be, and you expect good from Allah and you're patient, He'll provide you with what is better. Because Allah has promised this. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Allah Azza wa Jalla says, 'Wa nabdu wa nukum bi shayin min al khawf wa al juu wa naqas min al amwal wa al anfus wa al thamarat wa bashir al sabirin.' Allah Azza wa Jalla He says, 'What means? And certainly we will test you. We will test you throughout your life with things of fear and hunger, with loss of wealth, with loss of lives, with loss of fruits. But give glad tidings to the sabirin, to the patient ones.'" Give tidings to them. الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Those who when they're tested with any difficulty, they say, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Not just when somebody dies as who they're accustomed to do. But at any time, any trial, any a flat tire, something's not working, something breaks in your home. You say, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ those who when they're afflicted with the calamity, they say truly to Allah, we belong and to Him we will return. They are those on whom are salawat, blessings, blessings. Those to be blessed and be forgiven from their Lord. And they are those who receive Allah's mercy. And it is they who are the guided ones. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من يرضى الله به خير يصد منه رواه البخاري Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said when Allah wants good for somebody when Allah intends good for somebody he makes them suffer some afflictions go through some trials deal with some hardships and from other hadith we see that with every hardship every calamity Sins will be removed from you, and your patience will earn you reward. Even if it's just the prick of a thorn on your finger, you will be rewarded with it. وعن أمي سلمة رضي الله عنها قالت قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما من مسلم تصيبه مصيبة فيقول ما أمر الله به إن لله وإن إليه راجعون اللهم أجرني في مصيبتي وأخلف لي خيرا منها إلا أخلف الله لها خيرا منها. Ummi Salama radiallahu anha, she reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu said, if any Muslim suffers some type of hardship or calamity and says what Allah commanded him to say, 
يعني إن لله وإن إليه راجعون. To Allah we belong, and to Him we return. And they add to that, O oh Allah, reward me for my affliction and give me something better than it in exchange. Then Allah will give him better something in exchange for it. We're always looking for improvement or for for better ter- to terms of the times when we're dealing with these struggles. Say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Make this supplication that Ummi Salama said that, that, that narrated that the Prophet would make. And then Allah will exchange what you think you lost or what was taken from you with something better. She said when Abu Salama, her first husband, died, radiallahu anhu, he said, what, is, what Muslim is better than Abu Salama, whose family was the first to make hijrah with, to, to Allah's Messenger, sallallahu so he and his wife, Umm Salama, were the first to go to Abyssinia. The first hijrah was towards there. And Abu Salama died of wounds during the battle of Uhud, and the Prophet married, later he married her. She then said those words, and Allah gave her in exchange for Abu Salama better than him, which was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, be mindful of everything that's going on in your life, that it is a test, a test. The good and the hard times, they are tests, but these calamities that are befalling us, do not question Allah with them, but rather be patient. Do not think that something else should happen rather than what Allah decreed, because He's the best of planets. And His qadr, His decree, is what we should all want, because it is perfect. أَقُولُ قَالِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفَرَ اللَّهِ لَكُمْ اللَّهِ إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستخفيه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, in order for us to even comprehend putting our full trust and reliance upon Allah and being patient with Him, we must affirm our tawheed. The oneness of Allah with respect to His worship, that there is no one worthy of worship except for Allah alone without partners, in truth. And that Muhammad Sallallahu is His messenger and His servant. With Tawheed you face every misfortune, not with anxiety and depression and sadness and sorrow that overtakes you, but with acceptance, with trust in Allah and hope for His mercy. Nothing in this world or its inhabitants controls or benefits or harms you without Allah's permission. It ain't so and it never will be. That anyone can bring you harm without Allah decreeing it. That anyone can bring you good without Allah saying, go for it. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu ma qal qal rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ya ghulam, o young boy. Ihfad Allah, ihfadak. Be mindful of Allah and Allah will be mindful of you. Ihfad Allah, tihidhu dujahak. Be mindful of Allah and you will find him in front of you, not physically. Because the aqidah, the, the aqidah, the creed of the sunnah wa jama'ah, the people of the sunnah, is that Allah Azza wa Jal is above the seven heavens, above his arsh, separate from his creation. But his knowledge, his eyesight, his hearing is everywhere. He said, If you ask, ask only of Allah. If you seek help, only seek help from Allah. وَاعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتْ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَنْفَعُوكَ بِشَيْءٍ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتْبَ اللَّهُ لَكَ وَإِنْ اجْتَمَعُوا عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَضُرُّوكَ بِشَيْءٍ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتْبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ رُفِعَتِ الْأَقْلَامُ وَجَفَّتِ الصُّحُفُ قَالَ مُحَمَّدٌ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ He then continued the rest of the narration after saying, if you ask, ask only of Allah, if you seek help, only seek help from Allah. He said, then know that if the nation was to get together to benefit you with something, they would not benefit you with something except with something that Allah already decreed for you and prescribed for you. And if they were to get together to harm you with something, they would not be able to harm you by anything except with what Allah has already accorded against you. The pens have been lifted and the pages have dried. This is the qadr of Allah. 50,000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth, He commanded the pen to write down everything until the end of time, till the hour is established. 
So this matter is solely with Allah. قُلْ إِنَّ الْأَمْرَ كُلُّهُ لِلَّهِ Allah says or means say, indeed, all of the matters, all of the affairs, affairs belong completely to Allah. وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ عِنْدَهُ بِمِقْدَارِ عَالِمُ الْغَيْدِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ الْكَبِيرِ الْمُتَعَالِ He determines what your appointed time of death is. He determines what your wealth will be. He determines whether you'll be happy or sad all by His measure. He is the knower of the seen and the unseen, the great one. We further were proving this in the hadith of Mu'adh anhu, where he narrated from the Prophet Wasallam that the Prophet Wasallam he said that the person is brought together in the womb of his mother for 40 days as a nutsa, as the combinement of the female and the male uh, excretions. Then they are four for 40 days. Then there are 40 days for an alaka as a blood clot. Then there are 40 days as a mudra, as a piece of flesh. ثُمَّ يُرْسَلَ عَلَيْهِ الْمَلَكِ then the angel is sent to him, and he's commanded to blow the soul into the fetus in the womb of his mother. And he's commanded to write down four things. And then the angel is commanded to write down four things. He's commanded to write down his rizq, whether he's going to be rich or poor. His lifespan, how long he will live. His deeds, what kind of deeds he will do. Whether he will be a person who will be happy, enjoying the pleasures of paradise, or whether he will be sad and be destined for the hellfire. This is when you're in the womb of your mother that Allah then sends it upon an angel and commands them to write that down. So be careful becoming too weak or too sad, or thinking that anything besides Allah and this deen, sticking to this deen and the sunnah of this messenger وسلم, can harm you. We want and want and want. We want children, we want money, we want fame, we want status, we want this, we want that. But Allah may have something better in store for us. When any of those things of materialism are taken away, grief, sorrow, depression. But we miss a prayer, we miss two prayers, we lose our relationship with Allah, we don't even feel like we lost anything. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he said, verily for everything a slave loses, there is a substitute. But for the one who loses Allah Azza wa Jal, he will never find anything to replace him. So be with Allah, happy and thankful. Take those tests, if you are sad with them, take them with stride. Turning to him, remembering him. Indeed, with the remembrance of Allah, will the hearts find rest. Turn to Allah in these times and you will find that he will suffice you. Put your trust in Allah, accept his decisions. Be with Allah in every instance and ask for Him whatever you want. And Allah will grant it to you if it is good for you. Do not let this life, this, this dunya, be your greatest concern or the thing that pulls you away from Allah. Do not be a fool to face Allah, not fearing Allah or striving His Jannah. You may feel sorrow and anxiety. Failure, depression, hopelessness in this life, but don't make that your same situation in the Akhirah. That might be what you live here, but don't make that your situation when you go to meet Allah and then He tells you where you're going to be going. Al-Haqiqah anna marad al-amur lillahi azza wa jal. The true reality is that everything is up to Allah, and whatever Allah decrees is what we know to be best for us. So if you want success and happiness and healing and peace, then it's by fixing what is between you and Allah. So get closer, get closer to Allah by being a true servant of Allah. So when you call upon Him, He will answer you. And we will end with the reminder of this hadith from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, where he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا, وما تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مما افترضته عليه ولا يزال عبدي يتقرب إلي بالنوافل حتى أحبه فإذا أحببته كنت سمعه الذي يسمع به وبصره الذي يبصر به ويده الذي يبطش بها ورجله التي يمشي بها وإذ ولئن سألني لأعطينه ولئن استعادني لأعويذنه رواه البخاري 
Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said, A servant does not draw near to me with anything more love to me than the religious duties I've made upon him or her. The five daily prayers, paying the zakat and mal, fasting Ramadan, making haq once in your life, and if you can afford to do so and you're capable of doing so. And he says, my servant continues to draw closer and closer to me, bin nawafin, with the suppurgatory, the extra things, hatta uhibbah, till I love him. Till you earn the love of Allah by these extra prayers, these extra charities, these extra fasts, these extra good deeds. And then when I love him, he says, I am the hearing with which he hears, the seeing with which he sees, the hand with which he strikes, the leg with which he walks. He said, were he to ask me of anything, I would give it to him. And were he to seek refuge with me, I would grant him refuge. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, be with Allah, meaning implement the Qur'an and implement the sunnah of His Messenger You can be of those who Allah loves, who Allah supports, who Allah aids and helps, who Allah admits into Jannah, who Allah accepts the dua from when you're in times of need. But to do so, you must obey him and you must obey his messenger Do not let the calamities, the tragedies, the struggles of this life deter you from being a good Muslim. So even if this life is difficult, then I know the Qiyamah will be in the shade of Allah while other people are running in fear. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-rida ba'd al-qaba. Allahumma akhtab al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat. المؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم الأموات إنك أنت سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوب على دينك سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين